Rejoice now, all heavenly powers, sing choirs of angels, exalt all creation around God's throne. Jesus Christ is risen. Jesus Christ is risen. Celebrate with exaltation and sound the trumpet of salvation. Rejoice, O earth, in shining splendor, radiant in the brightness of your King. Jesus Christ is risen. Jesus Christ is risen. Christ has conquered, glory fills you, darkness vanishes forever. Rejoice, O holy church, exalting glory. Jesus Christ is risen. Jesus Christ is risen. Let the place resound with joy, echoing the mighty song of all God's people. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that with heart and mind and voice we should praise God and the Son, Jesus Christ, who redeemed us from bondage and freed us for this is the night this is the night this is the night this is the night to let the children of Israel out of slavery to freedom on this night all believers are renewed This is the night. This is the night when Christ burst the chains of death, rising to life in triumph. Oh, this is the night. This is the night. Night clear as day goodness to flight, washing sin away, restoring innocence to the fallen, joy to those who mourn, casting out hate, bringing peace and humbling pride. Therefore, in this night of grace, receive, O God, our praise and thanksgiving. For the light of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, reflected in the burning of this candle, oh, this is the night. We sing the glories of this pillar of fire, the brightness of which is not diminished. Even when its light is divided and borrowed, for it is fed by the melting wax that the bees, your servants, have made for the substance of this candle. Oh, this is the night. We therefore pray to you, O God, that this candle burning to the honor of your name will continue to vanquish the darkness of night and be mingled with the lights of heaven. May Christ the morning star find it burning, that morning star who never sets, that morning star who rising from the sheds light on the whole human race. Oh, this is the night. This is the night. This is 
Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. together. God of mercy, we no longer look for Jesus among the dead, 
for he is alive and has become the Lord of life. Increase in our minds and hearts the risen life we share with Christ and help us to grow as your people toward the fullness of eternal life with you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Most joyful Easter and a warm welcome to all of you. Thank you for coming. Particular welcome to those of you who are visiting. We're delighted that you're here. And we welcome you who worship online, grateful that technology allows the message to come to you where you are, and hopeful that you feel fellowship and warmth, unity with all of us. The peace of the risen Christ be with you all. Please exchange a sign of peace one with another.
The scripture this morning is Psalm 118, and we will read it responsively. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my might, and he has become my salvation. There are glad songs of victory in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. I shall not die, but I shall live and recount the deeds of the Lord. The Lord has punished me severely, but he did not give me over to death. Open to me the gates of righteousness that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made let us rejoice and be glad in it. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Good morning. I would like to invite all of the children to come forward and join me up front here. I have gifts, so you want to come up. <laughs> Good morning, friends. Yeah, just find a spot here on the, yep, you can sit behind each other, wherever it works. Good morning, good morning. Come on up. <laughs> if anyone's scared, parents or grandparents can come up too. It's all good. Good morning, friends. Okay, it has been, do we have everyone? Okay, it has been a big week for Jesus. Raise your hand if you were here last week. Okay, so if you were here last week, you know that we were celebrating what we call Palm Sunday. Uh, Jesus rode into Jerusalem on a donkey, and the people, it was like they threw him a parade, and they waved palm branches, and they shouted, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna means God save us. So they were shouting, God save us, God save us. And they were so excited, they rolled out the red carpet, but their version of the red carpet was palm branches and coats. So Jesus had a big welcome into Jerusalem. And then later in the week, he went to what we call the upper room. Do you want to help me tell this story? He went to what we call the upper room and had a meal with his disciples. And it was the very last meal that they would ever have together. And Jesus took bread and wine and said, drink this and eat this to remember me. Because Jesus wants us to remember how much he loves us, how much God loves us, so much that Jesus would do absolutely anything for us. And the next day, Jesus was arrested and put on trial, treated like a criminal, even though he wasn't. And we know that Jesus died on the cross, right? Is that the end of the story? No. What happened? Yes, he rose, right? So God raised Jesus from the dead. When Jesus died, they put him in like a cave, like a, like a tomb in a cave, and they rolled this big stone in front of it. And the next day, some of Jesus' friends came to see the tomb, and that stone was rolled away, and the tomb was empty. And they had no idea what had happened. Jesus wasn't there, and they were afraid, and they didn't know what had happened. And an angel said, don't be afraid. Jesus is not here. Jesus has risen from the dead, and then suddenly they see Jesus. And it's really true that Jesus rose from the dead. Now, usually when someone dies, that's the end of it, right? Like, we don't see them again. Are there ever things that die and come back to life? Flowers, that's exactly right. You take the seed from the flower and you bury it in the dirt and it comes back to life. I have another idea. What happens to a caterpillar? A, a caterpillar, but at first it goes into a cocoon, right? It's sort of like that cave that Jesus went into. 
and was in that cocoon, in that, they're in that cocoon for a little while, and then when they break out of it, they become a butterfly. This little butterfly that you are all going to get today says, new life in Jesus. And that's what we have. Here's what I want you to remember. Here is the hope that we get because Jesus rose from the dead. <laughs> no matter what, no matter what happens to you, no matter what mistakes we make, we know that there's always hope for a new day, right? There's always new life. There's always a new day. There's always a second chance for us. Even when we die, we will have new life with God in heaven. So there's never an end of the story for us. We're kind of like this butterfly because we have Jesus living in us, helping us to grow. Uh, the same way that flowers grow when they're fed and we give them water, Jesus grows in us love and kindness and care for other people. So I want you to remember that today. What you're going to get in your bag is one of these little butterflies. There's a, a storybook for you to color, the, the whole uh, story of Holy Week of Jesus. Um, there are some other fun things in there for you uh, that will help you to, to, to think about and understand this wonderful gift of new life that we celebrate on Easter. Will you pray with me? Okay, you can repeat after me. Are you ready? You can repeat after me. Here we go. Put your hands together. Dear God, we thank you for the gift of life. Thank you for your love. Help us to remember every day that we get second chances and there is always new life because you love us. All right. Pound your hands on your knees. And all of God's children said, amen. Thank you for coming out. Make sure you get a bag for me before you go back to sit. Gospel according to John chapter 20. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that Jesus must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying. 
one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabunai, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me because I have not yet ascended to the Father, but go to my brothers and say to them, I'm ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. The Gospel of our Lord. Please be seated. Christ is risen. Alleluia. Grace and peace to you, my dear friends, from our risen Lord and Savior Jesus. Amen. Well, that first Easter morning, the response from Jesus' disciples was not, He's risen indeed! Alleluia! Uninhibited joy did not reign supreme just yet. Confusion and fear were in the driver's seat. The disciples had been hiding in a locked upper room. Their teacher, their leader, their shepherd, their savior had just been executed by Rome and the leaders in Israel. The women were the only ones at the foot of the cross, the only ones that loved him, watching until the very end. Nicodemus, a Pharisee, and Joseph of Arimathea, a secret disciple, like Nicodemus, worked together to get permission from Pontius Pilate to take Jesus' body off the cross. Nicodemus and Joseph anoint Jesus for burial. They tenderly wrapped Jesus' body in linen cloth and lay him in Joseph's own tomb. They go home stunned and silent, devastated that the one they thought would redeem Israel has been killed. Not a very promising way to enter into Passover. The disciples spend all of Friday and Saturday frozen in fear. On Sunday, Mary Magdalene is not wanting to sit around in the shadows any longer. She goes to visit Jesus' tomb, and she sees that the huge stone has been rolled away. She runs back to Peter and the beloved disciples and reports that Jesus' body has gone missing. Not a lovely prospect, first thing in the morning. Peter and the beloved disciple race to the tomb. It gives me great and strange comfort that Jesus' friends were stumbling around in the early morning, not sure what to do or believe. There was a body, and now that body is gone. Jesus, of course, told them that he would die and rise again, but who can comprehend that? Our glorious Easter story begins early in the morning while it was still dark. In the dark. Everything we love about Easter, the trumpets, the tubas, if you can get them, the choirs, the robes, the flowers, the glorious artwork, the white pyramids and banners, the triumphant exclamations, all of it came much later. On that first Easter, there were three friends of Jesus tumbling and bumbling around in the dark, trying to make sense of what an empty tomb meant for them and their future. And I'm glad all of their responses are kept in the gospel text. When Peter sees the tomb is empty, he runs away. Impatient, impulsive Peter cannot stand to sit 
in mystery. Perhaps he's too ashamed from his denial of Jesus to stay behind with Mary and weep. He doesn't seem to think it would do any good to wait and see, and so he bolts. When the beloved disciple sees it, he believes without understanding. What he believes, we can't say. Does he believe this body's been stolen? Does he believe that God's Messiah really has been vindicated and raised again to new life? In that moment, he believes, and that's enough. He walks back to the locked room, perhaps to attend to Jesus' mother Mary, whom Jesus has left in his care. When Mary Magdalene sees the empty tomb, she cries, and she sits in her grief and waits for what God will do next. Two angels appear. She expresses her grief to them and then turns to find Jesus standing there. She believes that he is the gardener, and she begs him to show her where Jesus' body has been taken to. Jesus, for the first time in John's gospel, speaks a woman's name to her, and she knows that this is her best friend who has just been raised from the dead. All because she was willing to cry about it and wait. She becomes the apostle to the apostles, this woman of Magdala. She was pulled from the sway of seven demons by Jesus' power and dedicated her life to supporting him. And now she will dedicate her life to telling others how she has been saved and how the Lord was raised from the dead for her. All three disciples have very different experiences of Easter. Peter can't stay in the tension of mystery and he runs for it. The beloved disciple sees and quietly believes. Mary Magdalene sees angels, beseeches a gardener to help her locate her friend's body, and then in an instant is standing before the resurrected king of all creation. And guess what? Resurrection life meets them all. Jesus will appear to the men later that day, even though Peter was too impatient to wait at the tomb with Mary Magdalene. The beloved disciple will see Jesus that evening as he appears to them in the locked room to dissolve their fear. He believed without understanding what was happening, which is the same boat we are in, trusting in these powerful stories to be true and to be true for us. Mary Magdalene, so overwhelmed with grief, doesn't recognize Jesus at first. She has to hear her name before she can see him, just as we often need to hear our name spoken by God in love before we can see him acting in our midst. From Journey with Jesus, a weekly webzine, pastor and theologian Debbie Thomas writes this. Mary Magdalene sees Jesus first because she chooses to remain in the holy darkness, bereft and bewildered. She does not flee. She doesn't sugarcoat her despair. She doesn't go numb. She stays put in the place where her pain resides. She gives the grief, desolation, hopelessness, and agony of her circumstances their due. She refuses to abandon what is real, even when what is real is hard to bear. I love the way her story honors sorrow as a legitimate and faithful pathway to revelation. We all carry our own losses, our own griefs, our own traumas with us into the brightness of Easter. Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday maybe have never felt more real after All this place has experienced in the past several years. Loss and grief, struggle and hurt, trauma and hiddenness. And I'll say something to you that's not very Lutheran, and I won't say it again. (laughs) You've earned a joyful Easter morning. (laughs) 
You deserve it. I am so proud and honored to be here, to be new here, to be your pastor. I'm 100% all in on each of you. You are my flock and where my focus will be and where it will stay. But more importantly, God is 100% all in on you, body and blood included. You are his flock and he neither slumbers nor sleeps out of love for you. Together we will live and walk in his light and truth. If we can sit in the discomfort that will come and have patience in our hearts and work hard to see each other in the best possible light, there will be nothing we can't do. Jesus has created us for fellowship and joy. The empty tomb echoes this year with our surprise. If the tomb is empty and Jesus is raised, then there is healing for what has harmed us. There is hope that we too will rise again with all the saints who have gone before us. We have a future together. We have a future together even before the throne of God. The book of Job places these words on the lips of Job, an innocent man in the throes of deep darkness and loss. For I know that my Redeemer lives, and that at the last he will stand upon the earth. And after my skin has been thus destroyed, then in my flesh I shall see God, whom I shall see on my side, and my eyes shall behold, and not another." Jesus was raised from the dead so that we could live. And not only live, but John says to make our joy complete. We have been adopted as God's own children. We have been crowned with honor and love and glory. We have been given a future. Jesus appears among us today. He speaks our names, and he calls us to tell the world about the way his powerful love destroys death and the forces of evil. Jesus told his disciples before his crucifixion that one day they would have joy so powerful and so complete that it would never be taken from them. And that joy is yours. Christ is risen. Alleluia. Happy Easter, my dear friends.
On this day of resurrection, let us offer our prayers for ourselves, our neighbors, and our world. The prayers is, is spoken in petitions. Each, each petition ends, God, in your mercy, and you may respond. Hear our prayer. You call your church to witness to your life, deliverance, and salvation. We give thanks for all theologians, preachers, and teachers who proclaim your gospel. Equip all the baptized to share the joy of the resurrection in all we say and do. God, in your mercy. You bring abundant life throughout creation. The green blade rises, and all creation greets the resurrection dawn. Preserve vineyards and orchards fields and flocks, and those who tend them. Feed us with the fruits of your beloved creation. God, in your mercy. You show your steadfast love without regard to borders, barriers, or human-made divisions. Infuse your justice in every nation of the world that all experience the peace that you alone can give. God, in your mercy. You anointed your Son with the Holy Spirit and with prayer. Encourage us by his example in our ministries of healing, care, outreach, and hope. We pray for all who are in need, who are sick or hospitalized, especially Dave Merrill, Jerry Hansen, Jean Nyberg, Ron Schultz, Ray Jones, Judy Koppelman, Megan Swanson, Dave Dixon, Evan Stevens, Will, Becky, and Madeline Dunwitty, Terry Bonnerts, Jan Weber, Carol Patterson, Pat Keelb, Bonnie Nordby, Linda Meyer, Scott Knight, Judy Gazzola, Galen Perry, Mary Ann Lee, and Andrea Dietz. Protect and guide your missionaries in the field, learning and growing as disciples and leading their neighbors into a life of fellowship and union. Protect our military personnel and all who work to protect the most vulnerable around the world. God, in your mercy. Amen. You have put gladness in our hearts. Inspire us to recommit to this holy and beloved community at Transfiguration. Give us renewed joy and hope for the future. Lead us to participate in your risen life through fellowship and creativity each week. Bless us with your presence and protect us from those who would cause harm to this place. God, in your mercy. As you've raised Jesus from the dead, you show us your resurrection promise. With your holy ones who have sung your praise, free us from fear and grief and empower us to go and tell the good news. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We're about to receive the offering this morning. As always, we want to thank you for your gifts, the way they support the ministry of this place and our mission in Bloomington and in Minnesota and around the world. Today, we also want to say that each of you is a gift, and thank you for your presence. In the pews are these handy yellow cards. If you have a pastoral need or a request for prayer, if you're a visitor, we'd love to be able to be in contact with you. You may fill this out now while the offering is being taken and leave it in the offering basket or give it to any of the ushers as you leave church this morning. Know that you are a gift. And on Easter, know that it's a new day for us all. It's going to be 70 degrees this week. The twins are in first place. <laughs> you deserve it, Minnesota. <laughs> so now we receive the offering. Thanks for being present with us.
Please rise in body or spirit. And let us pray together. Generous God, in this meal you offer your very self. We give thanks for these gifts of the earth. In the breaking of this bread, reveal to us the risen one. In the pouring of this wine, pour us out in service to the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. O oh God, week after week you arise, gathering your people, proclaiming your word of life, feeding us with food that is eternal, sharing your spirit, and renewing the face of the earth. O oh God, transform us by this resurrection, that we may embrace all that you have made and live toward the justice that you intend. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the redemption of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Lord Jesus, be present to us and teach us to pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. You may all be seated, and I invite the communion assistants to come forward. First and most importantly, hear that this is God's meal of grace, and it's given for all of you. So all of you are welcome to participate in the sacrament this morning, to receive communion, to know that God is making this body new and you are part of it. At this service, we will have four stations. There'll be two at the front of the center aisle, as usual, and then there'll be one for this side, and there'll be one for our musicians. You may come forward and receive the elements the ushers will direct you. Um, we're, de we're delighted to be united in this meal of grace. Come and eat. Those of you online, we hope you've prepared bread and wine and are united with us as you hear the words, the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. All of you may come.
The body of our Lord Jesus Christ and his most precious blood strengthen you and keep you in God's grace this day and always. Amen. Let us, let us pray. Gracious God, in you we live and move and have our being. With your word and this meal of grace, you have nourished our life together. Strengthen us to show your love and serve the world in Jesus' name. Amen. A heartfelt and enthusiastic thank you to all who have made the worship possible. For those of you who gave flowers, for the altar guild, for the ushers, for the lector, for the, the musicians. Let's hear it for the musicians. The soundboard, those online, I shouldn't, shouldn't start listing. The unsung heroes behind the scenes, Marilyn, who did the bulletin, you who did the slides, Erica, it goes on and on. Um, but it's a great feast and a great day of new life. Um, thank you for being part of the resurrection of TLC. We're thrilled to have you with us this morning. Each of you is participating and preparing and creating new life among us. Thank you for your ministry here and in the world. If you ordered Easter Garden flowers, you're free to take them now after worship. I commend you to the bulletin where you'll see a whole bunch of ways that you can be engaged to grow in your faith or in service to our neighbors. Um, there are special treats after this service. So pause in the narthex for a little coffee and a donut and some conversation and fellowship. We're glad that all of you are here. We're anticipating new members reception yet this spring. So watch for a specific announcement of that. And if you're interested, be sure to let us know. Now you may rise in body or spirit for the word of benediction. May our glorious God grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Lord Jesus, the God of life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit one God and mother of us all, bless you now and forever. Amen.
Alleluia. Christ is risen indeed. Christ is risen. Go in peace, serve the risen one. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.